Hey, brother! Ben, I feel like it's been a while since we discussed Patronuses here on this channel, which I guess is okay, but I do like to remind everyone every couple of months that mine is a ferocious fox terrier and yours is just like a dumb old thestral. I mean, come on, I think we all know who would win in a fight between a fox terrier and a thestral, right? Because have you ever stared down the barrel of a gun that is an angry fox terrier? Because it's adorable. Oh, look at him, he's so cute. Good luck even casting your Patronus if you find yourself in that situation. I defy you to summon your courage when faced with this. And speaking of not being able to cast a Patronus, today let's see if we can figure out what Hagrid's would be. Did you know that the number one surefire way to increase your courage and happiness in order to cast your own Patronus is by clicking that subscribe button? I don't know, try it. Now it's important to point out right out of the gate that JK Rowling has actually weighed in on this situation and said that Hagrid, despite his caring nature, would not actually be able to perform the Patronus charm due to the complexity of the spell. And fair enough, I mean, he has trouble spelling Voldemort. Vol Voldemort? More. M-O-R-E? M-O-R-T? But it is also important to point out that that has never stopped us before, so let's dive right in. The curious thing about Hagrid's would-be Patronus is that he loves, like, every animal out there. He's kind of like Newt. It's very difficult to think, what would his corporeal Patronus actually be? Also, just as a quick refresher, J.K. Rowling has said that Newt's Patronus would be a massive spoiler for Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So if you want to see why we think it's a porcupine, you can click this video right here, hashtag porcupine for the win. But back to Hagrid. With his vast love of all massive monstrous creatures, where do we even begin? Well, Pottermore offers us so some direction, but also says there has never been a definitive way to determine what someone's Patronus would be. Due to their long-standing relationship with humans, cats, dogs, and horses are the most common kind of Patronus. Which I figured, hmm, that seems like a good starting point, except it almost doesn't narrow it down at all. Well, except actually we probably can just eliminate cats, because cats are stupid umbrage. But also I guess they're kind of okay, sorry McGonagall. But really, the only cat we ever see Hagrid interact with is Crookshanks, and only Barely, and maybe he handled the Sphinx for the Triwizard Tournament, but it just doesn't seem like a really clever half-woman, half-cat would be representative of Hagrid's personality, if you ask me. So, no cats, but what about dogs? Well, we know Hagrid owns at least two. Fang, his cowardly boarhound, and Fluffy, his three-headed underworld monster dog, which somehow just goes missing after the Sorcerer's Stone? What happened to Fluffy? That actually sounds like a pretty good video. What happened to Fluffy? Is he still in the third floor corridor? Is he in the forest? Hagrid, Hagrid, where are you keeping this thing? Oh, actually, it looks like J.K. Rowling said Dumbledore had him sent back to Greece, as he likes to send Hagrid's most foolish acquisitions back to where they came from, rather than the forest. Oh sure, but it was fine to keep him literally in your school with students for a year. That wasn't foolish at all. Yeah, what? He was behind a locked door. Really? Dumbledore, you call that locked? Alohomora. In a school of magic? Really? What was the point of the other obstacles anyway? I mean, you could have put the mirror in the entrance hall. Who's getting the stone out of the mirror? What's it? Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Back to Hagrid. Of the two dogs, I feel like Fluffy is the better case for a Patronus, as he's a better representation of Hagrid. He appears monstrous and dangerous, but can actually be quite gentle. But then there's the horse, which does not make things any easier at all, as Hagrid is apparently great with horses of any kind. I mean, he's good with the unicorns of the forest, he has a herd of Thestrals, a herd of Hippogriffs, and he can handle Madame Maxime's Abraxas? Braxi? Braxi? What? But I mean, how hard are they really? You just feed them a giant bucket of single malt whiskey and now I got a bunch of drunk giant winged horses. You know, I'm reading about winged horses in here and I have to say it doesn't mention whiskey at all. I'm not convinced the Bobaton carriage wasn't just a giant flying death trap. But back to Hagrid, I mean, he's even good with the centaurs, but I don't think those could actually be a Patronus, so we're gonna count them out for now. Now, early on in this research, I thought the Abraxas were a good option because Patronuses can sometimes represent the person you love. Tonks is a wolf for Lupin, Snape's is a doe for Lily, etc. In fact, that was even part of the rationale we had for or newts being a porcupine. Porcupine for the win! And since the Abraxiuses belong to Madame Maxine, I think that would definitely qualify for Hagrid. But I just don't think his giant 
eh? crush on her outweighs his love of giant, scary, monstrous creatures. It is truly what defines him, and out of all of his other horse creatures, there is no doubt about which one in particular is his favorite. Buckbeak the Hippogriff. So, sorry, Wither Wings. God, it's like the worst codename ever. But seriously, the amount of time they spend worrying about just Buckbeak, I, I bet you forgot that Hagrid actually has other Hippogriffs, didn't you? Hmm? Be honest. But what happened to the other Hippogriffs? Like, why do Harry and company insist on using Thestrals, which they can't see, when there are literal other winged horse creatures that they can see and know how to control in the same forest? <sighs> Not important. Three-headed dog, Hippogriff. These are my two front runners for Hagrid's Patronus at the moment. But just because cat, dog, and horse are the most common options doesn't mean they are the only options. There are other ways you might determine a Patronus. According to the great 18th century professor of charms, Professor Catullus Spengel, there are certain principles about Patronuses that are widely accepted as true. First is that the Patronus is the awakened secret self that lies dormant until needed, but which must now be brought to light. This is kind of like Harry and the stag, which represents his father, very much his awakened secret self. But so then, what is Hagrid's secret self? Well, the thing he seems to be trying to keep secret the most about himself is that he is half giant, which if you ask me isn't much of a secret because you know he's like math but he does seem pretty upset when Rita Skeeter reveals him to the world about it. But given his heritage and the fact that he does want to keep that a secret, I wonder if Giant itself could be an option for his Patronus. And yet, sadly, very little is known. The only mention of this is on a chocolate frog card inside the Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone computer game about Andros the Invincible, who was known for being able to cast a giant Patronus, but whether or not it was an actual giant or just a very large creature isn't known. Either way, I'm ruling out giant as an option because that just doesn't seem like canon, and because Spangle's second principle seems like it fits Hagrid way more. The second principle describes people whose favorite animal becomes their Patronus. On this, Spangle says, It is my firm belief that a Patronus is an indicator of obsession or eccentricity. Here is a wizard who may not be able to hide their essential self in common life, who may indeed parade tendencies that others might prefer to conceal. The classic example here is Dumbledore, who is very eccentric and whose favorite animal is a phoenix, which is also his Patronus. Personally, I feel like this one fits Hagrid pretty well. I mean, he literally can't hide his essential self because of his actual physical size, and he is quite obsessed when it comes to giant magical creatures. But the question is, which one is his favorite? Well, to me, this eliminates Fluffy and Buckbeak as contenders, but introduces new ones, in particular, dragons. We know Hagrid loves dragons. I mean, for one, he hatches a fire-breathing creature in his wooden house in book one, and he's the one who shows Harry the dragons in book four. But even though he owned a dragon for a little while, and even though Buckbeak is definitely his favorite hippogriff, I think there is one creature above all else that is truly Hagrid's favorite, Aragog the Acromantula. Aragog has a very long history with Hagrid, and I hope we get to see the start of that in Fantastic Beasts. He is the very beast people believe was the monster in the Chamber of Secrets, and is the reason Hagrid was expelled from school. And that is a huge Hagrid-sized detail. I mean, his whole life, his whole life is the way it is because of his affection and care for this one giant spider. Not only does he refuse to give him up, but he finds him a home and a wife, the lovely Mossog, who is quite a looker in the world of spiders, I understand. Not to mention, he even holds a funeral for him in The Half-Blood Prince and asks Harry, Ron, and Hermione to leave the school at night to come to. That's how much he loved Aragog. He wanted his three favorite students to break school rules to come to a spider funeral. He's giant, he's hairy, he's Hagrid's oldest friend, and friendly to a point, and my vote for the form of Hagrid's Patronus if he had the wand or skill to cast one, which he doesn't. Yep, we just spend half a day figuring out the corporeal form of a fictional spell a fictional character can't even cast, so 
Research time well spent. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Would Hagrid's Patronus, could he cast one, actually be an Acromantula, or would it be something else? Let us know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! And a special thanks to these patrons who support Super Carlin Brothers on Patreon. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Please remember to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to know the deal about Hagrid's wand, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to know about Newt's Patronus, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, bro.